Hey, it's Anthony from Studios 301 here. I've been playing around lately with the Max for Live LFO, and by using this, I can create my own modulation effects, most notably some phasers. A phaser is based around the idea of an all-pass filter, which we can create by using a variety of EQs on a return track. I'll load an EQ8 and set it to be a high-pass filter, set at the steeper of the two settings. I'll then add a utility in front of this EQ, and the reason for this is so I can control the phase of these filters that I'll be using shortly. Once I put these into a rack, it will allow me to have multiple filters running in parallel, and for now I'll name this chain High Pass Filter. Now I duplicate the High Pass Filter chain, and I'll have another filter in parallel. With this one, I'll change the filter to a Low Pass Type, and I'll just quickly tidy up to rename this new chain Low Pass Filter. Now I'll use the utility effect to put this chain out of phase with the high pass chain. If I map the first macro in my rack to the frequency of both the high and low pass filters, it will allow me to sweep both frequencies at the same time. Now I have an all pass filter, which is effectively a high pass filter and a low pass filter in parallel, but with the phase flipped on one of the filters. You can see here that my bass channel is being sent to my return track where the effect is. Listen to the bass while the frequency macro is adjusted. When I define the map control, I can use the Max for Live LFO to modulate the frequency of the all pass filter up and down. I'll tame the use of this LFO by adjusting the rate. Reduce the depth control so the LFO doesn't move over such a large range and adjust the offset, which effectively gives me control over the centre frequency on which the all-pass filter is applied. When I adjust the time mode, I can make the modulation work in time with my tempo. So there you have a basic phaser effect, based on the all-pass filter I have created. Now let's have a bit more fun with the idea and have a look at the racks I have made, which you can also download. These are based on the same live effects we've just looked at, but go far more in depth by creating multiple all pass filters in series with each other. This means they are put one after the other and it further enhances the sound. You can see the series of LFOs and all pass filters, and that's also known as the amount of poles in the phaser. By adjusting the poles macro here, I can change the tone of the phaser as each all pass filter is turned on and off. I've also mapped the phase of each of the bands of the all pass filters to a macro, which gives me further tone control by swapping the phase settings between the bands of the all pass filters. Watch out because there is a glitch as you cross that midpoint of the setting there. Some of the other controls I have here include what we looked at earlier. The center frequency. The rate. The modulation depth. and also a Q control, which has quite a dramatic effect on the phaser. Watch out, as it can easily distort. And to enhance the effect of the phaser overall, we can enable the send on the return track to create feedback, where the output of the phaser is being sent back to its input. You'll also have to be mindful of this setting, but by listening carefully, you can get some interesting use out of it. Now that we've looked through this rack, I've also created a very similar effect, but instead of using the EQ8, I've used the auto filter. This processes the sound in a similar way, but has a slightly different tone to it, because of the way the auto filter is created and its relationship with two parts of the all pass filters. If you play with the center frequency and the resonance control, you'll hear what I mean. So, that's the principles on which phases are made, both in hardware and software, and I hope you have fun with these racks I've made. Try experimenting with the all-pass filters and the Max for Live LFOs some more. We'd be keen to hear what you can come up with.